Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about year ossicles. So we have got three year ossicles in each year, namely malleus, incus and stapes and they are oriented from lateral to medial. So these are left ear ossicles and their names are derived from their Latin meaning. So malleus means hammer, incus means anvil and stapes means stirrup. Now let's see individual ear ossicle. So this is left malleus and you can correlate its size with the scale. Now in this diagram it is showing again left malleus its anterior view with its different parts namely a globular head, a constricted neck, a lateral process, an anterior process and a large handle or manubrium. Similarly this is posterior view showing the head with an articular surface which articulates with incus. This is lateral process and this is the handle. So again you can correlate the actual malleus with the scale to correlate its size. Now the head lies in epitympanic part and it is suspended from the roof of the tympanum by ligaments. It articulates posteriorly with incus, you can see over here, by a saddle synovial joint which is termed as incudomalleolar joint which is smallest saddle synovial joint. The handle is directed downward, backward and medially and it is embedded in the fibrous layer of tympanic membrane. The medial surface of the upper end of handle receives insertion of tendon of tensor tympani muscle. The anterior process over here you can see it is connected by a ligament which is termed as anterior ligament of malleus which is again a derivative of first pharyngeal arch and this ligament at another end is connected to spine of sphenoid. Now this ligament passes through pterotympanic fissure along with anterior tympanic vessels and corda tympani now. So anterior process is connected to spinosphenoid via this anterior ligament of malleus. The lateral process projects from the root of handle and it is attached to the upper part of tympanic sulcus via anterior and posterior malleolar folds. The malleus itself is derived from first pharyngeal arch. So this is regarding malleus. Now let's see incus. So this is left incus. You can correlate its size with the scale. Now in this diagram this is anterolateral view of left incus and it resembles the shape of a premolar tooth. It has got a body with an articular surface, a short process and a long process. Similarly this is medial view of left incus and you can correlate the size and the parts are again body, short process and long process. Now again in this diagram you can see the body articulates with the head of the malleus and together they form in kudomalleolar joint that is what we have discussed which is a smallest saddle synovial joint. So this is actually how this in kudomalleolar joint forms. Next is short process which projects backward and is connected by a ligament to the fossa incudis in the postero inferior part of epitympanic recess. So here will be the epitympanic recess in its postero inferior part. This is the posterior ligament of incus and this is the short process of it. So here you can correlate it with the short process of actual incus. See over here this is the short process. Similarly, the long process extends into tympanic membrane behind and parallel to upper part of the handle of malleus. Now this is handle of malleus, so over here these two run together and parallel. And the tip turns medially and forms a knob-like lentiform nodule, you can see over here. Now this nodule will articulate with head of the stapes and together they form incudostapedial joint which is ball and socket variety of synovial joint. Obviously it will be the smallest ball and socket variety of synovial joint of our body. So this is the long process you can see over here and this will run parallel with the upper part of handle of malleus within tympanic membrane. So this is left stapes you can correlate its size with the scale and here in the diagram this is superior view of left stapes. It is having a head, a neck, two crura anterior and posterior plus a foot plate or base. Now base is clearly visible in medial view. See over here this is how it looks like. It is rainy form in shape. Now head has got a depression and that will articulate with lentiform nodule of the incus 
and together they form incudostapedial joint that is what we already discussed and that is a ball and socket variety of joint next is the neck now posteriorly the neck receives insertion of stapedius let me show you the same in another diagram so over here you can see this is head neck to crura and a foot plate now you can correlate it with the actual stapes and as we have discussed posterior aspect of the neck of the stapes receives insertion of stapedius muscle which is supplied by facial now which is a derivative of second pharyngeal arch now stapes itself is a derivative of second pharyngeal arch whereas malleus and incus they are derived from first pharyngeal arch now again in this diagram you can see the stapes with its head neck to diverging crura which are connected to the foot plate or base the foot plate itself is connected to margins of fenestra vestibuli via annular ligament so here you can see these are annular ligament and this is scala vestibuli now let's understand mechanism of movement of ear ossicles so when the sound wave moves the tympanic membrane so along with the tympanic membrane the handle of malleus will also move medially now at the same time this incudomalleolar joint will get locked so this joint won't move and along with the malleus the long process of the incus will also move now this movement is seen in the form of a rotatory movement so the rotation will take place medially and the axis of rotation will extend from <clears throat> malleus to incus let me show you the same in another diagram so this is anterior process of malleus and this is short process of incus and the long axis of rotatory movement of these two will pass through these two processes so when the inward rotatory movement will occur at the same time the base of the stapes will move inward you can see over here with this arrow and that movement will be observed within this scala vestibuli so the inward movement of stapes will produce vibration secondary vibrations in the scala vestibuli and that will get again reflected back to the secondary tympanic membrane which will get bulge at the fenestra cochlei so here is the secondary tympanic membrane as the perilymph is incompressible so inward bulge of the stapes will lead to secondary outward bulge of secondary tympanic membrane the lower margin of base of the stapes acts as a fulcrum and the movement resembles tapping of the foot while the heel rests on the ground so this is how the stapes will move in and out during every movement inward movement or inward rotatory movement of the incus similarly when the tympanic membrane is forced laterally by inflating middle ear with eustachian catheter the malleus only will move outward but the incus does not follow the same movement because the incudomalleolar joint will get unlocked and thereby the stapes is prevented from being torn from the fenestra vestibuli so this is regarding mechanism of movement of ear ossicles so this is regarding ear ossicles hope you understood well thanks for watching